Our Bible word is Galatians 5 verse 14. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. First, the context of Galatians. Paul is the author, and there are two main ideas by scholars of when Paul wrote this and what the historical circumstances were. The one idea is called the Northern Galatian Hypothesis. This says that Paul wrote Galatians in one of his later missionary journeys around the middle of the 50s AD to the northern area of Galatia. But that's not the, uh, our approach that will be taken here. Far more convincing is something known as the Southern Galatian Hypothesis. And this says that Paul wrote this letter to those congregations at this, to the, in the south of Galatia and the congregations he visited during his first missionary journey. So if you follow the Southern Galatian hypothesis, our timeline will be something as follows. Of course, Paul, he was called to be an apostle by Jesus. And Paul says for three years he didn't go up to Jerusalem. And so for the first time Paul went to Jerusalem was in the year 37. And that's where he met Peter and James. We can read more also about this in Galatians 2 where Paul writes about what happened to him and his calling as an apostle. So in the year 37, that was his first visit when he saw Peter and James. That's Jesus' brother in Jerusalem. And then he went again. After that, to Jerusalem in 48, and he took along Barnabas and Titus. This was also when Paul took famine relief for the Christians in Jerusalem from the Christians in Antioch. And then also around 48 AD, this is something that's called or referred to as the Antioch incident. That is when Peter was in Antioch and the Jews and Gentiles, they were Freely at table fellowship. Then Paul writes in Galatians, some men from James came there. And they caused trouble. And they, because they probably insisted, no, Jews and Gentiles cannot eat together. And Peter also withdrew from table fellowship. And Paul was really angry about this. But that was the Antioch incident. So, so the issue of how to incorporate Gentiles into the faith, that was one of the events where it really came to the surface. And also in 48 AD, this is when Paul went on his first missionary journey. And we can read that in Acts 13 to 14. And he visited those congregations in southern Galatia, that's in Pisidian Antioch, Iconium, Lystra, and Derby. And it's probably to these congregations that the epistle of the Galatians is aimed at. But after Paul's first missionary journey to these congregations, some Jewish missionaries came there and they said, No, Paul is not telling you the whole truth. You must be circumcised. You must follow the Jewish way of life. In other words, they must become Jewish and then only then will you become real Christians and incorporated into the covenant people. And now when Paul heard of this, so in the year 49 AD, more or less, that's when he wrote this epistle to the Galatians. And after this, also, also about 49 AD, then there was the Apostolic Council in Jerusalem to sort out this issue of the Gentiles. And they don't have to be circumcised, etc. And so they can become part of the Christian fellowship together with the Jewish people, the Jewish followers of Jesus. So we'll follow the Southern Galatian hypothesis and this would make it Paul's earliest epistle that he wrote in the year 49 AD. Also together with 1 Thessalonians, that was another very early epistle of Paul. So Paul went on his first missionary journey and now he's heard there are these troublemakers that came to these congregations and they, and they said, Paul's gospel or what he's telling you is not the whole truth. You must be circumcised. You must observe the food laws and Sabbaths, etc. 
And essentially they requested that these Gentile Christians, they must become Jews before they can become Christians. And it was, if we go read in Galatians 4, verses 9 to 10, Paul specifically writes there, especially in verse 10, you observe days and months and seasons and years. So now it's these other missionaries insisted they must observe the Sabbath and all the other Jewish festival dates, etc. And also if we go to Galatians 5 verses 2, Apostle Paul also writes, Indeed I, Paul, say to you that if you become circumcised, Christ will profit you nothing. So these opponents were saying Paul's gospel is defective. His, his whole understanding of Jesus is questionable, etc. And now, but you must do this now. You must become Jewish in order to become real Christians. And of course, Paul defends himself against these other missionaries. If you go right at the beginning of the epistle, he says there, Paul, an apostle, not from men, nor through men, but through Jesus Christ and God the Father who raised him from the dead. So Paul is, is defending his status as apostle. And he's saying, my gospel is not defective. I was chosen as an apostle by Jesus and God the Father. So I'm a genuine apostle. My gospel is true, what I'm telling you. My understanding of the gospel is the correct understanding. So Paul must defend his status as an apostle against his, what he calls these troublemakers who have arrived there in his Galatian churches. So what these Christians or these Jewish missionaries probably argued was you must become part of the Jewish people. For, of course, at this time there would have also been lots of nationalism, if you can call that, in Judea and Israel. Because a lot of things happened there. So the anti-Gentile sentiment would have been strong to become free from these Gentiles that's, yeah, and the Romans, etc. And there's this movement of Jews. They are followers of Jesus. And part of them is that they eat with Gentiles. And they worship with Gentiles and eat their food, etc. So there's a blurring of the boundaries. So this would have in ammunition for those Jews who did, did not believe in Jesus and saying, you see there, you see what those followers of Jesus are doing. They're having table fellowship and eating food with Gentiles. And it's, they are undermining us as a people, our social boundaries as a cold people, as a special people. So the Jews in, or the Jewish Christians in Jerusalem, at this time under the leadership of James, Jesus' brother, he became the leader of the church in Jerusalem. So they would have felt under pressure that this blurring of the boundaries and incorporating Gentiles so freely caused them trouble. It would have caused them trouble to reach other Jews to become followers of Jesus. So there would have been this kind of backlash and say, hang on, hang on, hang on, you cannot... Just eat with Gentiles, etc. I mean, this is causing trouble for us with our fellow Jews. We want them to bring them to faith in Jesus. And that's why also this Antioch incident happened where Peter withdrew from table fellowship and says, hang on, hang on, you're making it difficult for us. But of course, Paul completely disagreed. I mean, he was a real, what you can call a real maverick apostle. He felt nothing more for these social boundaries. Because these Jewish missionaries, if you look at that image on screen, they would have understood themselves as the traditional covenant people of God. They are, they are the descendants of Abram as Jews, even though they are followers of Jesus. And part and parcel of this identity as God's people is to do works of the law. And these works of the law would be circumcision. It would be the feast days like the Sabbath and the other pilgrimage festival days etc. It will be to observe the food laws and outside of this boundary 
will be the Gentiles. They're not part of the covenant people. They're not descendants of Abram. So this would have been the traditional understanding of Jews. And even many of the first Jewish Christians, they were still understood themselves that salvation, to belong to God's people, only belonged or was only for those who had Jewish identity. It's for the Jews, no one else. And if you want to form part of the salvation community, you must become part of this Jewish identity. And Paul disagreed. If you look at the image on screen, there's a new social identity. And they are also the, they are the covenant people of God. They are the descendants of Abram. But yeah, the most important boundary marker here is Jesus. Jesus, together with faith and together with love, to do works of love. This is now the real people of God, the followers of Jesus. They live in the spirit compared to those outside, those who live in the flesh. So Paul casts away these traditional boundaries that circumscribed of those who belong to God's people. The works of the law. And he says, no, that's no longer there. It's irrelevant now. Because Paul also argues in Galatians, the law was temporary. The law was only there for Israel. And it was like living a life of slavery. It was being like an adolescent. It was very restrictive. It was something there to hold you in check. For example, if, Paul, if we go to chapter 3, verses 24... Paul writes there, Therefore the law was our tutor to bring us to Christ. Now that word tutor in English, the Greek actually refers to a slave. A slave that accompanied a boy to school and back. Also to make sure he doesn't get into trouble. So that's what Paul's argument. That's what the law was like. It was like the slave who accompanied us to make sure... That we just do what we're supposed to do and not get into trouble. But that is over now. The law was temporary. Now faith has come. Christ has come. People, humanity, so to speak, has come of age. And so that's the main thrust of Paul's argument. Christ brought us liberty. He brought us freedom. We have grown up, so to speak, now. We've been adopted as God's sons. We know longer like slaves or like adolescent boys who need to be under guardians and stewards to watch over you. It's a whole, a whole different time frame that has happened now where people have grown up, so to speak, and they, the life they lead is a different type of responsibility. Now if we focus on our textual unit, our textual unit is... Galatians 5 verses 13 to 15, it's the freedom for, another, to serve one another in love. And if we just go back quickly again, Paul argued for the Christian's freedom, his or her liberty. And the first portion of Galatians, or the bulk of it, from chapter 1 to chapter 5 verse 12, is where Paul explains how everything has changed. With Christ, his ministry, his death. And of course he counters this idea that you must be circumcised and observe Jewish laws to become, to become a Christian. That's what his opponents argued. That the people of God are still only the Jews and you must still do works of the law like circumcision and Sabbath and outside of God's people are the Gentiles. And Paul said no. Things have changed now. It's now what's important is Jesus Christ, what he did, and it's faith, and it's having a life in the spirit, and outside of these is the life in the flesh. This is how, how things have changed. And at the end, or at, from chapter 5, verses 1 to 12, Paul then makes a conclusion do not abandon your freedom. Do not abandon your freedom. And then the rest of Galatians, 
that is where Paul describes the norms and values of Christian identity. Because things have changed, this is what it means for you, the Christian, how you should live. So on the left hand column, we can say that's freedom from. That's what Christ set us free from. And on the right, is that's freedom for. Freedom for to serve one another, to love, etc. Because some could maybe argue, well, you say we are free. Where does this lead? Self-indulgence to sin, etc. And Paul would have said, no, just that's nonsense. The freedom from the law also is a call to a new responsibility. We can compare to an adolescent boy or a girl. They, they grow up and they become 18 and now maybe they get keys to a car and their parents say, okay, you are now free. You can now drive the car on your own. So now the question is, how will this adolescent child who has now deemed grown up, how will he or she drive the car? Responsibly, recklessly, will they behave like an adult or still like an adolescent now being behind the wheel? It's a similar kind of thing at confirmation. At confirmation, that adolescent is brought into adulthood. He or she receives the keys to his or her faith. And now the expectation is there, behave like an adult. You're no longer like an adolescent child, because that's what Paul said. Being under the law is being an adolescent, because there's guardians over you. There's this tutor, the slave who follows you around and to keep you in check, etc. But now you are grown up and you must behave accordingly. So if we look at verses 13 of chapter 5, Paul writes, For you, brethren, have been called to liberty. Only do not use liberty as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. So again, the bulk of Galatians is about how everything has changed, and that's freedom from. And that's freedom from slavery, the law, life in the flesh, being under tutor and guardians. It's like being an adolescent child. And also the elementary powers of the cosmos or the world. Paul's there referring to low-level angelic beings, etc., who are in charge of the planets and also ruling the world, so, and often was leading them also, so to speak. So that's the left-hand side. And now the freedom for, that deals with the norms and values of Christian identity. It's freedom for freedom, right? It's to be free. That means you're a grown-up, you're an adult, you make the right decisions. It's also the freedom existing in Christ. It's the life in the Spirit. It's to serve one another in love. That's the freedom for. So we have this freedom from those things, but where, what is freedom for? It's to live as a child of God, etc., so, in verse 14, now Paul explains how the law is fulfilled. This, this is the idea behind the law, and that's a Bible word. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Here Paul is citing from Leviticus 19 verses 18. So, as far as Paul is concerned, the law is not abandoned. The ritual aspects of the law that creates boundaries, social boundaries, is left behind. But the essence of the law, the heart of the law is here. Yeah, and it now must be fulfilled to love your neighbor, to serve one another in love. And because that's the law of Christ. So, this, remember this contrast. There's a freedom from Christ set us free from slavery, the law, and the life in the flesh, etc. But Christ also set us free for loving one another or serving one another in love, to exist in Him, to have this new quality of existence, this life in the Spirit. So, 
freedom from the law or freedom from being an adolescent now propels you into the realm of adulthood, so to speak, the realm of responsibility. How a true child of God lives and behaves. It's a freedom for, a freedom to be of benefit to others, to love other people in imitation of the nature of Christ.